Greetings and welcome to Sword Planetary Space Program episode 15. Yes, it's me again. I am trying to speed up the episodes a bit because news have arrived that Kerbal Space Program version 0.22 is in experimentals, meaning it will be released within the foreseeable future. And I have the ambition to have this entire series done before that happens. So, I'm picking up the pace again. Yeah, I'm going to try to release several episodes over the course of the next two weeks, hopefully bringing the program, if not to a completion, then to near completion. Because I have plans for point twenty two. Oh yes. Now, as to what I'm actually doing, I am uh, continuing where we left off last time, as always, by bringing the crew closer to Beta Station. Now, I don't want to bring them to Beta Station because of lag, so I'm going to bring the necessary parts from Beta Station out to the crew because it's you know it's not going to affect us anyway, not negatively. The only difference is going to be that I have to manage one more craft, the lander itself, before before we dock it. So here's the lander. I make sure everything is refueled and yeah, watch the lag. Just just watch it. I do as little as possible with the physics in in effect and then quickly time warp out of the sphere of influence of that little or shall I say rather large station. So now we have uh, matched up the trajectories of these two crafts and we have brought them together. Now the only thing left is to transfer the crew module which is containing Jordan, Dean and Sean or as they're called Dean and Sheen. So the command module as it's now called flies on its own over to the lander and will dock itself to it, as is the point here, to have these modular crafts. So here it comes, the marriage, these two spacecrafts. Yes, beautiful, beautiful. Now before we do anything else, we're going to do the 45 degree turn of the lander ship with respect to the fuel tanker, because I have done the mistake to do that after I planned the maneuver nodes enough times now. So, we are good to go. Next stop is dress. Uh, it's just one tiny problem. You see, the the downside of doing the stop at Minmus strategy, which I'm always doing, is that Minmus has to be in the right correction in order for you to be able to have a prograde burn with respect to Kerbin. And it's not the case right now. So while we wait for its orbit to get into the right position, we're going to return the pusher. Now this is very much same 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 as always. So I'm going to be quick about it. So we carefully you know step time forward to see that Linus is not in the doesn't overshoot its position because that would be bad. You see, the dress window is very close now, and uh, within one orbit of Minmus, we're going to be past it. So we put, our, put down our alarms, and we get ready to watch. And you see, Minmus is going around, and that's the dress window. And uh, Minmus needs to be preferably somewhere between prograde and 90 degrees past prograde. It's gonna be a while. The that that's the downside of the whole launch from Minmus strategy. The the upside is that it's still usually more fuel efficient to do it this way. At least fuel efficient outside of Kerbin's sphere of influence. So we are just doing some tweaking of our orbit to do a rendezvous with Alpha Station. Actually, from here it's very similar to what I always do. So it just with the addition of needing to keep keep track of Minimus as well. So we have arrived. 
I started the burn very early to match velocities. The consequence being that I was able to match the velocities without overshooting. The downside was that it took a long time and it was very boring to watch. Now, some time warping later. Minimus is in the right position. I have made the maneuver nodes as well as I can. And it's time to leave. So we get ourselves into position around Minimus and commence the escape burn. This brings us into a orbit with a low curb in periapsis, as low as I dare to make it. And from here we need to adjust the maneuver nodes again, just to make sure we have a dress encounter. And uh, through a lot of work, we finally get it. There it is. Yes, dress encounter. This means it will work. So now we wait to till we co come down to our curb in periapsis. And the node is a fair bit past the periapsis, so we're going to start our burn about at periaps. Now I, w I wonder if the Kerbals, the poor Kerbals, can, can see their home one last time before they're going out into the cold dark void. Yes, they can. They can see a sliver of Kerbin through the windows for a short while. Too bad it's dark so they can't really see any features of it. And here begins a long burn. The burn is long and it takes a lot of fuel, but it's actually significantly smaller than it would have been if I had launched from low curb in orbit. I can actually do the burn itself and its correction, correction burn, which is substantial when going to dress. For the, 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 the total delta V of those two maneuvers is smaller than the, just the delta V needed to launch from low curb in orbit. Now, if this footage looks a bit like shoot, it's because it is. I had a severe error when recording this last piece, and I was able to recover footage, but with lower quality. And that's what you're seeing now. As for the crew, they are done. We are leaving Kerbin. We are going to space. And uh, the episode is over. Thanks for watching. Bye!